Sanford, North Carolina, and everyone out there listening, good morning to you. This is the day which the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it, all the more so as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this morning. I'm Jeff Mazingo. I'm the pastor of Miracle Baptist Church right here in lovely Sanford, North Carolina. And on behalf of everyone at Sand Hills Broadcasting, we want to welcome you to this very special sunrise service this morning. And folks, we're going to have a great time this morning. We're going to hear some good music from a Mr. Jonathan Norris. Pastor Joel Murr of the Grace Chapel Church, he's going to bring us some scripture and give us some comments. And then Dr. Calvin Sales from the Jonesboro Heights Baptist Church, he's going to deliver the message for us this morning. And so you stay with us and wake up this morning. Wake up. Hey, contact somebody else out there if you know somebody that might be uh, benefited from joining us. Start working the phones, texting to them, whatever it might be. But you don't want to miss this and they don't want to miss it. Let's just worship God this morning, praise Him, and see what He has in store for us today. I'm looking forward to it. I hope that you are. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Father, we thank you for this good and glorious day you've given us. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who laid down His life, died for our sins, that we might be saved by placing our faith in Him. And Lord, we're rejoicing today and we're thankful today that He arose from the grave, Lord. We don't serve a living, a dead Lord, a, do, a dead Savior. He's alive and we thank you for that, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for this time to be part of the service this morning. I pray that you'd bless in all that's said and done. Have your will and your way. Lord, everyone who has any part of this service, I pray you'd bless them. Those who had part of planning it and executing this service this morning, bless them, Lord. And especially the congregation as we call them out there this morning. Everyone who's listening, maybe they'll see it by way of recording later on. Bless them in whatever special way they need. Lord, if there's somebody that needs to be saved, I pray you'd save that soul before this day is over. And again, Lord, we'll remember to just thank you and praise you and give you all the glory for that you do. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, folks, it's time for Brother Jeff to get on out of the way. Uh, God bless all of you. And I want to tell you this morning, Jesus Christ, he's alive. He's risen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to play one that's probably pretty familiar to a lot of you guys. Um, this was a hymn, and it got redone about probably 20 years ago. And um, it's one of my favorites in Christ Alone.
body lame light of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory his curse has lost his grip on Well, good morning, uh, everyone. I trust you've been blessed today already by the beautiful music that is highlighting the resurrection of uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you to everyone who's taken part in this special Easter uh, programming uh, this morning. I know all of uh, these pastors and musicians have a big day ahead of them uh, celebrating uh, of course, the resurrection. I want to again welcome all of you listeners uh, on WFJA and WWGP, those watching or listening on the internet today. We're so glad that you uh, tuned in. And uh, let me greet you like all the Christians did in the New Testament. And they would say, hey, he is risen. And people would return that with, he is risen indeed. That means he is risen certainly. He is risen undeniably. He is risen positively. There was no question in the mind of the early church that Jesus Christ was risen from the dead. Well, my job this morning is simply to read the resurrection account and uh, make a comment or two before Jonathan comes back and uh, sings another song and then Dr. Sales delivers uh, the message this morning. There are actually four accounts of this wonderful story written in the Gospels. Of course, each of the Gospels records this, and uh, each of these men uh, write from a different perspective. Uh, there really are no, there are no contradictions in the Word of God, but uh, they write from a different perspective, but they all include the most important parts of the whole story. We can't read all of them for time's sake, so this morning I chose uh, the, the account of Luke, the physician, Dr. Luke, and so Luke chapter 24, beginning in verse 1, uh, says it like this, But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but, they, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. What an incredible statement there. They did not find uh, the body of the Lord Jesus. And then verse 4 says, While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men suddenly appeared near them in gleaming clothing. And as, women, as, and as the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why are you seeking the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was still in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the tomb and reported all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Verse 10 says, Now they were 
Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James, also the other women with them, were telling these things to the apostles. But these words appeared to them as nonsense, and they would not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen wrappings only, and he went away to his home, marveling at what had happened. I love the words of the Apostle Paul, who wrote a letter back to the church that he started in Corinth in about 55 AD, uh, which means that he had started the church about three years before that. He had left. He wrote a letter back to uh, that church. And the Apostle Paul, whose life was changed uh, on the road to Damascus when he met the Lord, says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Now I make known to you, what he was saying was, I remind you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received and which also you stand by which also you are saved. You know, the resurrection is part of the gospel. It's how we believe that Jesus not only died, but that three days later, he arose a victor and uh, uh, with victory over death, hell, and the grave. And he says, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preach to you, unless you believed in vain, unless it wasn't real. I, I believe there are some people that believe but it's not really real. And then Paul said this, for I delivered to you as of first importance. Listen, I'm one of those bottom line guys. I like to know what is the most important thing. If you're talking to me, tell me what you got to tell me. Tell me the most important thing. And that's what Paul said. And he said, what I also received that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. It was prophesied, and uh, of course, we know that it all came true. My dear friends, this event in history changed everything. Jesus now had proved, in fact, that he was God in the flesh. His resurrection from the grave defeated sin. It defeated death. It proved death has no authority over him. And when we put our faith in him and enter his family, sin, of course, has no longer a grip on us. It has no longer a hold on us. All of our sins, past, present, and future, are forgiven because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Whatever sin we lived in before we met Jesus, all of that has been paid for. We are set free from sin. We are able to live a new life in Jesus Christ by his grace. Well, may the Lord bless each of you today. Again, my name is Joel Murr, and I'm the senior pastor at Grace Chapel in Sanford here in North Carolina. If I can answer any questions for you, I'd be glad to do that. You can call our church office or go to uh, or, or send us an email at church at gracechapelsanford.com. Thank you again for joining this 36th annual Easter Sunrise Community Broadcast Service uh, right here. We're so uh, thrilled at what the Lord's going to do today um, as we all together celebrate the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Remember, He is risen. He is risen indeed. And now Jonathan's going to come back and he's going to sing uh, for us another song called Living Hope. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name and to the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my Boundless grace, the God of me. 
has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. And Jesus Christ, my Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free, hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me, you have broken every chain, there's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. That sealed the promise Your buried body Began to breathe Out of the silence The roaring lion Declare the grave Has no claim on me Jesus, yours is the big lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name Jesus Christ my living hope hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost on me, you have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh God, you are my. Good morning. I want to read this morning from the book of Matthew in the 28th chapter, beginning in the first verse. Now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave, and behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. An appearance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. The guards shook for fear and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come, see the place where he was lying. Go, quickly tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you, and they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to report to his disciples. Many years ago, when I was in seminary, I remember my theology professor once asked, what's the importance of the empty tomb? The question seems so simple, it should be dismissed without much thought, because after all, we've all celebrated Easter for most of our lives. But why? Why? I think one said, the empty tomb shows that Jesus was resurrected from the dead. And of course, that's the right answer. It describes what happened, but the question is, why is it important to us today? We know the empty tomb is important, but we might kind of struggle to succinctly answer why. Christmas is a little easier, isn't it? Christmas commemorates the birth of Jesus, the inbreaking of the Son of God who loved us too much to stay distant and aloof. 
We remember the advent of Emmanuel, God with us, and we lean forward longing for his return. But what about Easter? Likewise, we can point to the purpose of the cross and understand. The cross was where Jesus, the one and only Son of God, paid for my sins. His blood washed me, cleansed me, and returned me to a right relationship with our Heavenly Father. And not just me, but you, the entire world, all who accept the free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. Sins, past, present, and future, perfectly covered, forgotten, erased by his sacrifice at the cross. His birth, our cross, which he endured, I understand, and they make a difference in my life, the way that I live every day. But what about the empty tomb? We know it's important. Something about today is different. What is it? The Apostle Paul, inspired by the Spirit of God, knew it was important. If we asked him, does the empty tomb make a difference in your life? He answers for us in 1 Corinthians 15, For I delivered to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. The tomb of Jesus Christ is empty. How do we know? Well, historians tell us. The women eyewitnesses, they would confess. The apostles had newfound courage that changed lives of James and many others. The crowd of eyewitnesses, 500 and then more. The conversion of Paul and each one's willingness to die for the resurrected Christ. They wouldn't die for a lie. They wouldn't die for a scam. They chose to give everything to a living Jesus, a living Savior of the world. But you know, there's one more essential proof, isn't there? Think it through. You know it. It's the one that is most important to every believer listening today. Every believer has had a personal encounter with the risen Lord Jesus. By the power of the Spirit, you experienced his presence. You experienced his power and his love. I remember as just a little boy calling out to Jesus and feeling the Spirit and his love like nothing I'd ever encountered before. Even so, have we answered the question? What is the importance of the empty tomb? The Apostle Paul surely stressed the resurrection. In 1 Corinthians 15, 16, he says, For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If we have hope in Christ in this life only, we are of the most pitied men. But that's not the case, is it? And that's why the Apostle Paul and we believe that the resurrection is essential. That's why we celebrate today. Because the resurrection is the proof that everything that Jesus said is true. It's all true. The empty tomb is the proof that Christ kept what seems his greatest and most difficult promise. And if he can keep that promise, then we can believe all of his words and his promises that Jesus ever made to us. Secondly, the resurrection is the proof that we can live without fear. It seems to me there's so many people screaming at us today, encouraging us to be afraid. But the greatest fear of all, from the beginning of time to this very day, and until Jesus returns, is the fear of death. The fear of death is insidious. It's a, a joy killer. It's a thief that robs us of the abundance of life. And sadly, even some Christians still fear. But you see, the empty tomb is the proof that Christ has been raised from the dead, conquering death for all who believe in him. Because listen now, just as surely as Christ was raised from the dead, so all who believe in him. Fear? Nonsense. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, and that is very much better. Third, although life can be hard, the risen Lord Jesus intercedes for you in this very moment. 
so that you may have victory and abundance in your life. Romans 8.34 says, Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died, yes, rather, he who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. How amazing is it to know that the Son of God continually defends us, intercedes for us, because the tomb is empty and he is alive. Finally, I would just say that although life can be hard, the risen Lord Jesus, on that last day, he will stand victorious over everything. And the scriptures say that we, believers, will stand with him. 1 Corinthians 15, 55, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is in the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. In my theology class, the professor asked, what is the importance of the empty tomb? We all bantered it around the, uh, the, the question for a long time. I think we covered it well, but probably not succinctly. Even so, he persisted. He said, true, but what does the resurrection mean 2,000 years later? More specifically, what does it mean to you, to you this week, this day? What does it mean in your life right now? You know, a couple weeks ago, I went through kind of a challenging moment in my life. I understand we all have these times. We all have moments of challenge. I had a little minor health issue, which was persistent and a little painful. At the same time, my youngest son told us he was moving to Arizona, which I've had a hard time with. I found out someone was upset with me, and although we say things like, well, you can't please everyone, the truth is I struggle when it happens. And other things, too, all intersecting in my life at the same time to the point I felt myself kind of getting quiet and withdrawing. After a few days of being down, the Spirit, the Spirit of God spoke to my heart unexpectedly and just said three words. You are victorious. And in those three little words, I heard so much more. Like no matter what, no matter if someone doesn't like you, no matter if the family changes, even though there are aches and pains, in Jesus Christ, you are victorious. Now I knew all those things. I've known them in kind of in my head for years. But at a tender-hearted moment, the Spirit spoke with such an affirming love that I knew it deep down to be absolutely, profoundly true. And I experienced such a peace and a renewed confidence and strength to move forward. Romans 8.37 says, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. You see, brothers and sisters, that's Easter. That's the victory that we have right now. That's the victory that we'll have forever. Why? Because the tomb is empty. What does Easter mean in your life right now? It doesn't mean that we're not going to go through some difficult times, but how do you respond? We saw on that first day that the chief priests just were in angry denial. That's how they responded. There were guards who certainly failed in their responsibility. They just had kind of a passive defiance. That's not good enough. Certainly the appropriate response is joy, joyful obedience, because, friends, this is Easter, because the tomb is empty, and because this very day Jesus is alive. Can I pray for you? Good and gracious Father, we thank you for all of the blessings that you poured into our lives. And Lord Jesus, we thank you this day for everything that the empty tomb means. I thank you for the opportunity to speaking to friends today, for brothers and sisters, and I pray your rich blessings on every one of them today. I pray your spirit will uh, be very present in their life because, Lord, there are things that we struggle about. You know you've been through worse than anything that we can imagine. So I pray that you would rest upon them and give them rest that you would give them incredible blessing as they go to church this day, if they're able. I pray, Lord, that you would draw close to us and we to you. 
And I pray, Father, for those that may not know you. I pray, Lord, that you would bless them. And perhaps through a song they've heard this morning, a, a word that they've heard, that the Spirit of God may speak through that word into their heart to know that you love them. Help each one to respond. We are desperate for you. We are created for you. We need you. Oh God, we thank you so much. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you loved us too much to stay far away and distant. You loved us too much to have this broken relationship between us, but so you came and you proved that every word that you said is true. The tomb is empty. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.